Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is point change and it is a medium level problem. So this is again a very standard deep problem and uh, it is actually derived from the staircase problem where staircase is also a DP problem and this is just a slight modification of that particular problem. And interestingly enough, today's lead code problem of the day is also exactly the same problem. So if you are able to solve this one, you will definitely be able to solve that problem as well. The only difference between these two problems is that of the data type. You will see that in the lead code version, the answer will always fit in a 32 bit integer that is a normal integer in C++ and in geeks for geeks, you will have to take long long for your answer to be correct. Right. So this is one mistake I made during the submission on GFG and that is why I also got one wrong submission. But uh, if you take long long, then everything will be fine. So let us please start with the discussion and uh, before that, let us first understand what the problem is and then we'll discuss how we can solve this problem. So you see, this is the whole uh, sample test case. Now, if I take this one, you see that they are saying we have coins of type 1, 2 and 3, right? So 1, 2 and 3 means that there is a coin of denomination 1, there is a coin of denomination 2 and there is a coin of denomination 3, right? So let's say this is 1 rupees, 2 rupees and 3 rupees, right? We have an unlimited supply of all of these coins and we want to form the total sum is equal to 4, right? Using these three types of points, we want to form the total sum is equal to 4. So how many ways are there to form a total value of 4 or total sum of 4? So you see this, uh, the examples or the four possible ways are, the first thing is you can take four coins of denomination 1, right? So this is the first way to form the sum is equal to 4. The second way is to take two coins of one denomination and one coin of two denomination, right? So 1 plus 1 plus 2, right, like this. So the total sum, total sum in this case will be equal to 4. Again, you can take two points of denomination 2 each, right, and the total sum will again be 4. Now at the end, you can take one coin of denomination 1 and one coin of denomination 3, the total sum will again be 4. So this way, you have four possible ways and this is the output 4 that has been written here. These are the four possible ways with which you can form the total sum is equal to 4. Now, let us first discuss how it is similar to staircase problem. So the staircase problem says that at each step, you can climb either one step or two step or three step. It is something like this. And you have to find the number of ways to climb in steps, right? So the key difference between the staircase problem and this particular problem is that the order does not matter in the staircase problem. For example, uh, let's say if I have one, two, one, right? So the total sum is equal to four, right? Now, this configuration is different from this particular configuration, which also has a total sum 4. This means that you first climb one step, then you climb two steps together, then you climb one step at the end to make a total sum is equal to 4. Now the second configuration says that first you climb one step, then you again climb one step, and then at the end you climb two steps to make the total sum is equal to 4. Right. But in the coin change problem, these two configurations are going to be the exact same. These are not different from each other, right? Why? Because if you have two coins of type 1 and you have one coin of type 2, no matter in which order you place them, the coin the types and the number of coins will always be the same, right? So this is how this coin change problem, coin change problem is different from the staircase problem. Both of them are very similar problems, right? But they have a very slight difference and that is why I said a coin change problem is actually a slight modification of the staircase problem. So this is the difference between coin change and staircase. Now let us discuss how we can solve this problem. But before discussing that, let us discuss our DP states. So I'm going to form a DP, double dimensional DP, DP of IJ, where I is going to denote my current coin, my current coin, which I am treating, right? J is going to denote my current sum left, right? So I'll be forming a double dimensional DP, DP of IJ, where I is going to denote my current coin. That means if I have an array of points in which I have multiple coins, right? So if I'm currently talking about this particular coin, then I will denote that particular index. Now J is going to denote my current sum left. 
that means if at any point i need x rupees more so j is going to denote that now with the help of j i can easily form my base case why right? because when i need zero amount of coins let's say i need zero amount of coins that means i have fulfilled my criteria of the sum right so whenever j is equals to zero j is equals to zero that means this is one possible way of forming my answer why is it so because whenever j becomes zero that means i have fulfilled the criteria of my total sum right because there is zero sum left or another way to say it is that i have taken my whole value of initial sum so that means whenever j becomes zero that means it is one possible way of finding the answer right now for all the other cases we have to find the correct value now what will be the transitions let us talk about the transitions so if i write the transitions transitions so at each step i will either take or not take my current one right so how do i decide whether i take or not the beauty of dynamic programming is you don't have to decide anything you can just figure out both of the ways so let's say if i try to take my current point then i can only take it if my current sum that is left let's say j minus coins of i coins of i is greater than equals to zero why because if i take the current coin and the sum becomes less than zero that means i will exceed the my total sum that is required and that should not be the case so every time i try to take the current coin j minus coins of i should be greater than equals to zero only then i can take it if it is true then my current answer let's say take will depend on dp of i j minus coins of i right so why have i written dp of i here you see that when i try to take the current coin then in my next turn i can again try to take the same coin right that is why i have not touched the index i because in the next turn i might again decide that okay i want to take this coin again right but what if i decide not to take it right i can decide not to take it only when my index is greater than 0 why why am i putting this condition if everything was one base indexing i would not have to put this condition but if you are treating the input array as zero base and zero index has the first point that means you will have to put this condition you will see in a while why i have to put this condition because no take will be equals to i minus 1 and j will remain as it is right so you see what is happening when i decide not to take the my current point then i move on to the previous index right or the next index you can say it anything but once i move to it you will see there is no way of getting back to the current ith index right so that means i can take the coins of any particular type together only right so let me just write it once so let's say i am taking the current coin 5 right so i can take multiple occurrences of 5 using this particular condition right i can take as many 5 i want as long as the total sum is greater than equal to 0 right but once i move to my next coin let's say it is of 2 rupees right now i cannot go back to 5 you see there is no condition here which is going to i plus 1th index so i cannot go back to 5 again i can only go to either 2 or the next coin which might be 1 as well right so this is how the order will always be preserved right and there will not be a condition like this 5 2 5 or 5 5 2 right because all the 5 will occur together right so with the help of this particular condition you will realize that the order will be preserved in this particular case and you see whenever i am not taking my current coin i mean i am moving on to the previous index and the sum remains the same and now you will easily understand why i have put this condition here if i is greater than zero because if i am at zero then i cannot go to index minus one here that is why i have put this condition i is greater than zero here and if the whole array was of one based indexing then i could have easily uh, avoided this condition because at the zeroth index will there will be no point in one based indexing right so this is another way of doing it now let us discuss some idea of the memoization approach so let's say you will have your helper function and uh, first of all you will have your index and your current sum let's say c sum right so if if c sum is equal to is equal to 0 that means you have found one possible way of dealing with the situation 
right so that means you can return one from here otherwise you will have to check if if index is equal to is equal to minus one then in that case you have to return zero because you have not satisfied your criteria of the sum but you have exhausted all of the different types of coins so that means now you cannot form your required sum that is why you can return zero from here now you will have to check if dp of index and c sum is not equal to minus one then you can just directly return return dp of index our c sum right so this is the statement where you check whether the answer for your current state has been already computed or not if it has been computed already then you can just directly return it now you have two choices either you can take the current coin or you can not take the current coin let me just initialize both of them with zero like this right now what i'll do if my current sum is greater than equals to coins of index then only i can try taking the current coin so that even after taking my current coin my sum does not becomes less than zero right so then in that case i can make my take as helper of index will remain the same and my current sum will decrease by coins of index right now what i do in the other case if i try to decide not to take this particular uh, coin then my index will get decremented by one and my current sum will remain as it is now at the end i can just return dp of index and current sum is equals to take plus no take so what am i doing here first of all i am figuring out a way if i decide to take the current coin that is what is stored in this particular variable take now i can also decide not to take the current coin and that is what is stored in this particular variable no take for my current index and current sum there are two different ways which I, which i could have taken from here right so i will have to take the summation of both of those because i have to consider both of the ways so this is how you can decide the answer for your current dp state now at the end your final answer will be stored at n comma total sum right because initially you were starting from the last index and going to the first index and your remaining sum was equals to the sum that was provided in the input or you can also say that you will be calling your helper function from the last index n comma your total sum this particular value which has been given in the input right so if you do this and return this part your memorization function will work now i am going to show you my code which was written using the iterative dp and you will realize that there are a lot of similarities between iterative and recursive dp very very minute changes and you will be easily able to convert this particular memorization db into iterative db so let us have a look at the final code so you see what i have done is i have created a double dimensional vector of data type long long and the size is n cross sum plus 1 so why i have taken sum plus 1 here because i also want to include sum as one of the indexes now i just run a simple for loop to set up the base case where dp of i is zero that means when the sum becomes zero is a valid case and i have to mark all of these values as one right and by default all of the other values will be zero right so now what i do i am just making a for loop we will talk about these for loops later but let us first have a look at the core logic inside these for loops right so now i is going to denote my current index and j is going to denote my current sum right now initialize similar to the memorization approach i initialize two variables take and no take if j is greater than or equals to coins of i that means i can take the current coin and that is why i said take is equals to dp of i comma j minus coins of i if i decide not to take my current coin then my index will have to be greater than 0 so that i do not get to a negative index by doing i minus 1 so that is why i said no take is equals to dp of i minus 1 comma j now my dp of ij will be equals to take plus no take because i have to consider both of the ways and at the end i can just return dp of the last index that means n minus 1 comma sum right now let us talk about the for loops that you will have to add for the iterative dp now to add the for loops you need to check the dependencies of the current state i comma j so you will see that the current state i comma j is depending on i minus 1 right i minus 1 means that your state i minus 1 will have to be computed before you calculate the state i right that is why the for loop for i should be a forward for loop that is that means starting on the value 0 going till 
up to n minus 1. Now, similarly, for the current state dpij, it is depending on dpi, comma, j minus something. That means the current value of j is depending on some smaller value of j, right? Whereas the index i will remain the same. So that is why you have to compute the smaller value of j first. That is why you will have to also run a forward for loop for j, right? So this is how you can think how to convert a standard memoization approach to iterative approach. You don't have to do anything. You just have to write your code DP logic. And after observing the dependencies, you can just write your for loops. Right. And since you have already done everything or set up the base case for j is equal to 0, you don't have to do it here. You can start your j from 1. Right. So this was all about base problem of the day. Now let me just quickly submit this and show you and this particular code works. And if you like uh, run the same code on lead code as well, it is going to work. It's just that the input variable is different there. It is amount on lead code and it is sum here. Right. So we'll have to take care of that. Now you see this, this passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of course and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.